They keep attacking, bombardment, airstrikes, shooting in the city is constant. Some people who were evacuating were fired on. The occupiers know very well they are unarmed civilians, but they look for whatever pretext they can to shoot peaceful people. Donald Jensen is the director of Russia and Europe at the U.S. Institute of Peace and a former American diplomat. He joins me now from Washington. Donald, I'm curious about your thoughts on this uh, call from Russia for Ukraine to surrender Mariupol. It did seem unlikely that re Ukraine would accept it, but I'm curious as to what your thoughts are on that. Issues here. One, of course, is, as you mentioned, the horrific humanitarian disaster in Mariupol. The Russians have demanded surrender, but frankly, I see no signs that the inhabitants will. Uh, Mariup Mariupol is very close to Russia. It's uh, been under siege for, uh, as your film showed, three weeks. But many of the other cities in Ukraine also are holding out. And in fact, in Odessa, the Russians are not even close. So, what, But what you see here is, I think, a shift in tactics by Russia, having their initial campaign for a quick lightning strike frustrated by Ukrainian resistance. Now they're going to dig in. Now they're going to attack civilian targets, civilians, hospitals, schools. I think that's now going to be the next stage of the war. And it's going to be horrific. Uh, but it partly reflects the bravery of the Ukrainian people and in the resistance so far. Russia had promised that it would allow, allow a humanitarian corridor out of Mariupol. Can Ukraine trust Russia in any way, or has that trust been lost? Because previous humanitarian, humanitarian corridors have been violated. I think they should not trust the Ukrainian gov uh, Russian uh, promises. As you say, previous corridors have been violated. Russians have indiscriminately attacked civilians. And all that uh, shows that they don't really care about the fate of civilians. As you may have read, there are also stories that Russia has a de deported some Ukrainians into the Russian Federation. So I don't think we can trust Russian assurances at all. Certainly, we need a lot more from that side to believe in what they say about their humanitarian concerns, because there's no, there's no evidence of it. What would capturing Mariupol mean for Russian forces? Explain to us why this is such a strategic city for them. It is strategic because it is one key element in their attempt to get the Black Sea, northern littoral, under control. There are several cities that have either not been touched, much like Odessa, or under threat and are resisting. But Mariupol is the first of those jewels that the Russians need if they're going to control the Black Sea. That's number one. Number two is that if you control Mariupol, Russian troops can go inland and turn north because the Ukrainian heartland south of Kiev, east of the Donbass, has really not seen much war at all. And if you capture Mariupol, this may, and I say may, allow the Russians to make an easier turn and go toward the interior, ultimately toward Kiev. You talked about how the Russian forces are bombing civilian targets and how this is probably part of a changing strategy in Ukraine. Does that amount to war crimes? Well, in my personal view, yes, it does. Uh, there's plenty here to uh, put a lot of people who are tried into jail for a lot of years. Uh, and I think this is going to continue. The problem, of course, in international uh, courts of justice is getting people in the dock. And of course, we're obviously a long way from that. But I have no doubt that these are war crimes. All right. Donald Jensen joining us from Washington. Thank you for your insight into all of this. Thank you.